For each of the three flasks, we insert a temperature probe, turn on the magnetic stir bar, and place under vacuum for one hour at 120 degrees Celsius. After the selenium flask has been degassed for one hour, you can switch to argon and remove it from the heat. You can also remove the temperature probe and now place it into the sonicator to dissolve the selenium powder. It should sonicate for about 30 minutes. After the hour of degassing, the reaction flask will be a clear solution. We can switch it to argon now and add half of the zinc telluride cores from the previous procedure shown in another video. After degassing, we can take the cadmium flask and put one argon needle in to fill the flask with argon. We can then remove the vacuum and replace it with an exhaust needle. We'll then heat this flask up to 300 degrees or until the cadmium is dissolved and we're left with a clear solution. If you notice your solvent evaporating during the heating process for the cadmium flask, you can add one to two milliliters of ODE. Once the cadmium solution has become optically clear and colorless, you can take it off of the heating mantle and let it cool to room temperature. Once the selenium solution has finished sonicating, it should be clear and there should be no powder left in the solution. At this point, we can inject the room temperature cadmium solution into it. Set the flask aside and let the precursors mix. Set the temperature of the reaction flask to 240 degrees Celsius, but be aware that the first injection will be done at 230 degrees Celsius. Each injection will be 0.1 ml of the precursor solution, and we will do them every 10 minutes after the initial injection. Five minutes after each injection, take a sample. Each sample will be 0.1 ml and diluted in 3 milliliters of chloroform. After the sample is taken, make sure to remove the needle from the liquid and flush it a few times so that it doesn't get clogged. To track the growth of the shell, immediately check the fluorescence of the taken samples. When the reaction begins, the solution will turn a yellowish-brown color, and as more shell is added, it will become a darker brown. Once the emission has reached the desired wavelength, we can quench the reaction by taking it off the heat. Once the reaction flask is cooled to room temperature, we add 12 ml of ethanol and split between two centrifuge tubes, topping each off with ethanol. Shake the centrifuge tubes to mix and place into the centrifuge. Spin for about 10 minutes at 5800 RPM. After centrifuging, we can see that the particles have collected to one side and we can pour off the liquid phase. We redissolve the crystals in about seven milliliters of chloroform and thoroughly shake until all of it is dissolved. Use the same chloroform from the first tube to redissolve the crystals in the other tube. Once dissolved, the solution will be dark brown and clear if held up to the light. Store the solution in a glass vial at room temperature. This is your zinc telluride cadmium selenide. As the shell has grown, we can see the emission peak shift from about 700 nanometers to about 850, which is where we usually stop it. This correlates to a shell of about 2 nanometers. Transmission electron microscope images show that some of the zinc telluride cad selenide will be roughly spherical with a diameter of about 5 to 6 nanometers, and some will be pyramidal, about the same size. The larger the shell grows, the higher percentage of these particles will be pyramidal.